and it turned out that God used that or something they said or then you can speak into their lives and you can believe things. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Father, for your beautiful presence, for your faithfulness, God, you promised that you would be with us, Lord Jesus, and you have been and you are right now. And God, we give you glory for that. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And God, we worship you. And Lord, now we worship you also in our giving. God, I pray as we collect this offering, oh God, as free will, oh Lord God, we give it with glad hearts. Bless it and multiply it, God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, you may come and collect our tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. You know, I was thinking about um, today, and the Lord was speaking to my heart as I was praying what uh, the Lord wanted uh, us to share tonight. And I was thinking about how uh, growing up we depend on our parents. We need to depend on our parents because we can't um, take care of ourselves when we're younger. Then we grow up and we still have needs and it gets a little harder to depend on people, but sometimes we need to depend on friends to help us. How many have depended on somebody and they've come through for you? Thank God for the body body of Christ. Thank God for people that God puts in our way that we can depend on. I think that when we think about God, our thoughts are never his thoughts. I think we get our concepts and our views from Others and from our own experiences, good and bad, but we tend to miss the mark with who God is, how he operates, and how he desires to do so much for us. When we follow Jesus, those of us that are truly following Jesus, we tend to depend on him for really big things. When when you're a follower of Christ and you're facing a big issue, the tendency is to depend on God for big things because we can't do them on our own. But we try to figure out our own daily aggravations and those little things that, uh, and challenges that come our way every day, and we try to figure those out on our own. How many know what I'm talking about? And we think that it's just not big enough for God. And I think that we cheat ourselves in that the Lord has made himself available to us for everything. That's the cry of his heart. When you read scripture, he's saying, depend on me, come to me. That's what he wants from us. Because he wants us to depend on him for everything. That's the cry tonight from the Lord's heart, that we would depend on him. It's so hard for us to do that. Sometimes we depend on people that are not dependable. How many know that God is a hundred, well, a thousand percent dependable? Amen. 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 But we many times don't depend on him like we should. The psalmist in Psalm chapter 62, verse 5 and 7, learned to depend on him. This is what it says there. Yes, my soul Find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock and my refuge. To make it through this life in victory We have to learn how to depend on God. We have to learn how to depend on God. A lot of us depend on ourselves. Or maybe you depend on somebody else. But that's a false hope and not a good place to put your dependence. But in order to make it through in victory in this life, we need to learn how to depend on God. How many say amen? And I say we need to learn 
because I don't know what it is with us, but we must take God at his word. I want to take God at his word. It's been a learning process for me. Even though God has been faithful time and time again, how many of you can say, without being coaxed, God has been faithful to you? Raise your hand if God has been faithful. And yet, we have still a problem dependent fully on God. Isn't that something? Right? We have a problem depending on God. So I want to learn with you tonight how we can depend on God better. First of all, to learn to depend on God with any kind or type of need, you have to make prayer your first option. Amen. You have to make it your first option. You know, a prayer is really talking to God, running to God. That's what prayer is. I think we, the fact that it's called prayer, we, we, we don't see it as what it is. In other words, I I, in prayer is, is my spirit speaking with God. Because he's spirit, my spirit has to speak with God. But I use my human voice. Even though you can pray quietly. How many pray quietly? I, 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 you know, I grew up in a church where everything was really quiet. And, um, you know, there are times for that. And so a lot of times my prayers were here. You know, just quietly or, you know, slowly whisper. But one of the things that I found that helps me is to voice my prayers as if God were there. Because he's there. Right? And so I've learned to just speak with God. It really helps me. Because when I speak to someone like you or my friends, my family... I speak to them with my voice. And so God hears my voice. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> so you have to learn how to pray right away when a need comes up. Go to prayer first before you do anything else. Let it be like a reflex action. First John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 says this is, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Now let me tell you something about God. There are different things that we pray for. There are th things that we want that we pray for. And we have to learn how to pray according to God's will. Obviously, if you pray for something and it's not God's will, it's not God's best for you, then the answer is going to be no or not yet or whatever. But I want to tell you something, that when you pray for a need, you are praying according to God's will. Because God told us that we should go to him for all of our needs. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares about you, right? And that he will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches in heaven. So when you have a need and you pray to God, automatically you are praying according to God's will. And according to the scripture that I just read, when you pray according to God's will, then he hears you. And when you know that he hears you, then you know that you have what you have asked. Amen. That is our confidence and when you pray, what you're doing is you're showing your dependence on God. Yes. Who do you depend on first when you have a need? Who do you depend on first? Let it be a reflex action that you go to God first. Amen? Amen. Depend on him for everything. Nothing bothers him. If anything bothers him, I would dare say, is us not going to him. For our needs. Amen? Amen. So to depend on God in any kind of need, you have to make prayer your first option. Then after you pray, you have to wait with expectancy. You have to wait as if you uh, are expecting something to happen. In Micah chapter 7, verse 7, the word of God says this, but as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait 
for God my Savior. My God will hear me. That has to be our attitude. In other words, you pray, you wait, and you know that your God will hear you. How many say amen? amen? You have to wait on God. But sometimes the need is immediate, isn't it? Sometimes the need is immediate. So what you have to do, what I've learned to do, is to take a moment to calm myself. Right? Take a breath. I've prayed, and now I have to take a breath and wait, even though the need is immediate. I can't get all flustered, and, 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 because that's not faith, is it? I have to calm myself and focus on him. Take a breather. Pray and wait. Wait and pray. Then after you do that, you pray, you wait, you wait and pray, and then you listen. Listen for God's voice as you pray. You know, he speaks to you. He speaks to you. In Job chapter 33, verses 14 through 16, it says this, For God does speak. How many say amen? amen. Now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears. In other words, sometimes he whispers to you and terrify them with warnings. Sometimes he warns us when we're not living right or warns us when we are living right of things to come. You have to listen for his voice. Take time to listen for his voice. Sometimes we're just too much in a hurry and there's too much going on in our mind. You have to quiet yourself and learn to listen for God. I think that's, uh, to, to me, one of the biggest challenges that we have in prayer. Because we can learn how to talk and pray and pray and pray and pray. But to learn to wait and listen, that's a challenge because your mind can wander if, uh, you know, if, if you can't muster up a mustard seed of faith, you're, you're, you, you, you feel maybe silly waiting for, to hear God. But the scripture here says, for God does speak, and he does. And he speaks in all kinds of ways. You have to be ready. You have to listen. Then you also have to refuse to worry. You have to refuse to worry. Worry implies a lack of trust and a lack of faith. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was admonishing his people, and he's admonishing us tonight. He says in verse 30, And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that they are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And then he continues in Luke chapter 12, along the same theme in verse 25 and 26. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? You know... We have to know, like I was saying, get to know God better. You have to know, when you get to know God better, that he cares about the things that you care about. That he's concerned with the things that you're concerned about. You know, uh, uh, when the boys were growing up, and uh, you know, when they were very little, and they learned to talk, and they would communicate what they thought their needs were, I would listen to them, and sometimes something that was so big in their eyes was really small to me, but to them it was a giant, right? And so I would listen so that I could fulfill that need. And sometimes, I, I, I didn't say, ah, that's what they want? Come on, I ain't got time for that. You know, I, I'm just here, with, come back when you have something really big, son. Don't bother me with that. No, of course we don't do that. Right? We're listening. Our ears are inclined to our children with whatever it is. 
I remember when I was really young, you know, because I've, because of my mom uh, loving the Lord so much and uh, being a prayer warrior, uh, my mom taught my sister and I about Jesus and was lived an exemplary life. And uh, so from very young, uh, I would pray and rely on God for little things. I remember as a little boy, I, I, silly things. Maybe it was a toy that broke or something. And I would, I mean, it was serious to me, right? I remember one time I, I was banging. My, my, my dad was a, a, a laborer. You know, we were, uh, uh, didn't have a lot. My dad was, uh, you know, the only one that, uh, sole provider. My mom was a stay-at-home mom taking care of us. And Somehow he got some money together. My sister was interested in playing the piano. And he, he got his money together and he bought a piano. And so one day I was home, you know, uh, uh, my, my, my uh, father had gone out. And I don't know what my mother was doing, but I started banging on the piano. And one of the keys collapsed. I thought that was the end of the world. The end of the world. That's it. I'm dead. You know, my life, my young little life is over. I'm not going to see, you know, seven years old. <laughs> and I began to pray, God, help me. Help me fix this thing. And I, you know, I, 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 I put a little piece of paper in there to prop it up, you know, to help God, you know, or, or at least to cover me until he answered. <laughs> Nobody knew until you play that key. <laughs> But I remember somebody came and played it, and it sunk, and he just opened the top, and it was just one little thing that had disconnected a little hook, and he hooked it back on, and, and nothing happened. I mean, thank you, Jesus. You know, he listens to little uh, prayers of a child. Amen? And somehow I think when I grew older, I forgot about that. And God had to remind me how good he is. I have a trust that he cares about everything that I care about. I have to know that. And I have to know that he has the right provision and the right solution to my need. He has the right provision and the right solution uh, to your need. You know, uh, there's a story that I love to tell because it just taught me so much. Years ago, uh, Joey was very small. Maybe he was too two and a half. Timmy wasn't born yet. And um, I had to take a trip. I was working for the church in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, the choir was invited to sing at this large uh, praise gathering in Indiana. And for some reason, my wife didn't go. I guess she stayed home with our son. And uh, while I was away, she decided to take uh, my son Joey, he was uh, two and a half, and my mother-in-law um, to Pennsylvania. There was this uh, sesame place, the place was called, and it was a couple of hour drive from where we lived, and um, as w the choir had just sang, we were part of that praise gathering thing. It was a celebration of the Lord Jesus, and after we sang, I sat down to listen to whoever was going to bring the message, and um, and my phone started ringing. I had it on my hip, I remember, and I looked, and it was her, and so I left the auditorium to answer it, and I said, hi, is everything okay? And she says, no. And so she says, the car conked out on me. Well, where are you? I'm on some road, and it's dark, and I don't have any idea where I am. She didn't know where, ta what town she was in, what road she was on, and so I can't tell you how helpless I felt, yeah. because if she would have known where she was, I could have called somebody, hey, you got to help me out, you know, go help my wife. She's stuck with my little son and my mother-in-law, but I had nothing. We had nothing. So I started to panic, but then I said, babe, let's pray. And I was on the phone with her, and we began to pray. And as I was praying, God showed me something. He showed me something that I, 
I, I, I'm telling you, God speaks, yeah. right? And what he showed me was that a week before, I had bought some windshield wiper fluid. And I remember seeing that when I bought it for the first time, I never pay attention. I just grabbed the windshield. It, I remember that it said windshield wiper fluid slash, uh, what do you call that liquid? Antifreeze, right? So I didn't know what was wrong with the car, but I saw that as I was praying. So when we finished praying, I said, babe, can you go to the trunk? Open up the trunk and see if there's a bottle of windshield wiper fluid there. And she goes to the back. Yes, there is. Does it say antifreeze as well? She goes, yes, it does. I say, here's what you're going to do. I'm not a mechanic. I know nothing about cars, right? So I said, open up the hood. I do know you have to be careful if the car over. I don't, I don't know if the car's overheated. I don't know what's wrong with the car. I said, very carefully open up the little top on the radiator. Get a rag or something. She, she opens it up. and it's, I said, when, it, when the fizz, you know, when the steam let out, I said, open it up and pour that in there. And she pours it in. She goes, now what? Get in the car and turn the key. Started right up. How in the world, someone who knows nothing about cars, and you would think of putting windshield wiper fluid I'm telling you, God speaks, and he taught me a lesson that day. Because probably if I was there, I would have been all upset and stressed out, and I wouldn't have th thought of anything, and I wouldn't have even thought of praying. But because I had no other choice, and I had my back against the wall, he taught me, listen, I can take care of your family better than you can. Learn to come to me because I have answers for you. Amen. Amen. Timmy, if you'd come. So last night, yesterday, in the evening, we got together a few of our little family members to decorate the house for Christmas. That was the plan. And we had gotten a little something to eat. And when I got home, uh, we looked by the sink, and we had a, a little placemat there, and it was soaked. So we look under the sink, and we have this... I didn't know that uh, you can't drink water here um, because in New York, they have good, it's, it's considered one of the best tasting waters right out of the tap, New York water. It's just really good and it's fresh. You can drink it out of the tap over here. Try that. If you want to live, <laughs> don't do it. But I didn't know about well water because well water is, um, you know, has a lot of stuff in it. So... There's this whole process, and there's a neutralizer downstairs, and there's a, uh, a motor to pull the well, the water. And so we were told, you better get a reverse osmosis system. Don't ask me what it is, and don't ask me how it works. It's not just a filter. It goes up through a filter and out through the other one, and then it goes back, and who knows what it does. But supposedly, when it comes out that little faucet, it is pure. Right? So that's what was leaking. And if you've ever seen one of those things, it has tubes everywhere, right? And I don't know anything about cars, and I don't know anything about reverse osmosis systems or plumbing. So I'm thinking, oh, no, what do I do now, right? So I sat down, and I tried to figure something out, and um, I started to pray. I said, Lord, how do I, how do, I do this? I don't know what to do. Help me, Lord. I don't know what to do. And so I began, I shut the water out down underneath the sink. And I started pulling out these tubes, right, to check them out. And pulling, I had to unscrew the little faucet. I had to get under the sink. I looked like I knew the part, let me tell you. I was under there. I had a little light. I got one of those little working lights. And went, boy, this guy's a plumber. No, he's not. <laughs> And I'm, you know, I loosen the thing and I try to tighten the, you know, it looked like they weren't fully on these tubes and I put them all the way in and then I, I said, let me, well, let me test it again before I tighten it. She goes, no, no, tighten it, tighten it, have faith, she said, all right, so I'm praying, okay, so I tighten it, then we turn back the, the water on and it was still leaking. I said, oh, I said, Lord, what do I do? 
and something maybe maybe something is stopped up right so I start pulling out tubes again and I pulled out this green one don't ever pull out the green one in a reverse osmosis system there was water was spraying all over the place and I had the water off it was so then I, I looked and the, the tube was coming from downstairs so okay I got to turn off the main water so I mean I got took a nice bath <laughs> I ran downstairs, and I shut off the main, and it stopped. And I'm down there, and I'm saying, Lord, what do I do? And, and he showed me. Don't ask me, but I saw a, a, a weed whacker th- thing that I had for an old machine that I had. You know those, the string, the plastic string, if you know what a weed whacker is. So I cut a big piece, and I pulled out this tube, and I stuck it in there. And then I stuck it down the drain. I don't know why I was doing it, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I put it back together. We turned on the water downstairs and underneath the faucet. And I'm looking, and it's not leaking. And I put a bucket under there, you know. Yeah, little faith. <laughs> and it didn't leak. And I'm thinking, that's a small thing, right? I mean, we could just shut the water off and call a plumber in the morning. But Jesus said, I will supply for all of your needs according to my riches in heaven. It, you know, compared to the problems of life, that's relatively small, right? But, you know, when you go to God... He shows you how to do what you don't know how to do. You don't even know what you're doing. But you're kind of going with what he's showing you. There's a, there, there's a still small voice. There's a direction. There's a prompting in your heart. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And you go do what you don't even know what, what you're doing. And then, you know, talk about when, when the thing is done, you know, and it wasn't leaking and I went an hour later, well, maybe when the thing fills up, maybe it'll leak then, right? And the thing filled up and it wasn't leaking. I woke up in the middle of the night and I went to check it. It wasn't leaking. When I got up this morning, I went to check it and it wasn't leaking. What's my point? My point is we have to learn to depend on God for more. Let me tell you what happens when you depend on God. You please him. He loves for you to depend on him. Because he loves to bless you. He loves to take care of you. How many have loved ones that you love to take care of? It's no weight to take care of somebody that you love, is it? You please him. When you depend on him, you spare yourself a lot of stress a lot of stress. You know, that whole time I was not stressed out. Even when the thing started going, I was like, I had, I was calm. You spare yourself a lot of stress when you depend on God. Also, when you depend on God, you spare people around you a lot of your stress. (laughs) How many know what I'm talking about? How nice are you to be around when you're stressed out? When you depend on God, you retain your peace. You don't let it go. You keep it. You keep your peace. Even in the midst of these annoyances and inconveniences. And and you find rest for your soul. And guess what? You develop a thankful heart. And you learn to depend on him a little bit more next time. Amen. The Lord wants you to know big or small, possible or impossible, God wants you and me to depend on him for everything. What if we did? What if we depended on him for everything instead of doing the running around without a, like a chicken without a head dance that we do? What if we just stop? Wait a minute. I'm going to God. I'm going to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, learn to depend on God. 
I want to depend on him for more. I really do. I have no other plan. I'm cutting out the backup plan. <laughs> He's plan A, B, and C for me. Amen. Let him be that for you as well. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're so dependable. Thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you that you patiently wait for us to get it, God, that you want to be involved in our lives, oh God, that you care about us enough, even, God, for the daily uh, things that come up, oh God, these things that happen because we live in this, uh, Lord, corruptible world, and God, we, uh, we, we, we go through the things that uh, happen in life, oh God, things break, and uh, Lord, things uh, get mistaken, and all sorts of situations, oh God, that for us, God, we can get all bent out of shape about. But God, you don't get bent out of shape about anything because, Father, you have the solution for all things. And God, those things can be something, God, that can help us to grow in Christ and to learn how to trust you more, oh Lord God, and to even love you more, oh God. And Lord, to develop, oh God, a greater heart of thanksgiving, oh God, which we should have for our own health, oh Lord God. Oh, Father, how we need you, Lord God. How we need you, Lord Jesus. Father, help us to depend on you, God. We want to do that, oh, Lord. Lord, like that father prayed, whose son, Lord God, was possessed. And, Lord, the disciples couldn't cast out that demon, Lord. And, Lord Jesus, you asked that father, do you believe I can do this? And the father said, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. God, that we would learn to be that honest, Lord God, and confess, Lord God, what it is that we're going through. God, you don't chastise us for it. Lord, you, you did save that little boy, oh, Lord God. You took whatever little faith that father had, oh, God. And, Lord, you worked with it, and you saved his son. Father, in the same way, oh, God, see our mustard seed of faith, oh, God. Lord, and help us, oh God, to remember, God, not at the end of things, not when we're all stressed out and have everybody else stressed out, oh God, at the very beginning, that we would learn to trust you for everything and depend on you for everything, oh God. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Can we support each other in prayer right now?